The Solomon Islands is a sovereign nation in Oceania, located just a couple thousand kilometers from Australia's coastline. It's known for beautiful beaches and tranquil waters, but recently it made international headlines for choosing China as its partner in a new security deal. Naturally, this move has outraged Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison, who has had some major conflicts with Beijing these past two years. The Solomon Islands government indicated the security agreement with China was needed because an agreement with traditional partner Australia was inadequate. In today's video, I'm gonna reveal the real reason the Solomon Islands chose China, but also explain how Australia and America's reaction to this decision reveals a glaring double standard in Western foreign diplomacy. But before we get started, I wanna take a moment and thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring courses for anyone who wants to learn new skills. It's springtime here in beautiful British Columbia and I recently discovered a new course on photography. And every month I discover new courses from how to improve as a YouTuber to even improving my business and management skills. Whatever your passion is in life, I guarantee you that you can find a suitable course for you on Skillshare. The first thousand people who click on the link in the description or use my promo code Cyrus Jansen will receive a one month premium subscription to Skillshare. Now, why does the Solomon Islands need a security deal in the first place? In this article from The Guardian, author Meg Keane, a professor at the Australian National University writes, this is a pivotal time for the Solomon Islands. The nation has a potential election next year in addition to hosting the 2023 Pacific Games. The island has had a recent string of violent protests and needs an international partner to help maintain stability inside the country. The security deal allows Chinese troops to be deployed to help maintain public order and protect property. In addition, there is a provision to allow Chinese ships to make visits, refuel, add supplies and have a stopover in the Solomon Islands. And this is where Australia and the United States have expressed major concern. Is this the groundwork of China building a permanent military base in the region? Now the reaction from some Australians has been completely over the top, with some going as far to say that Australia should militarily invade the Solomon Islands and force a regime change in the government. David Llewellyn Smith, the editor-in-chief and publisher of Macro Business, Australia's most widely read economic and business blog, made these controversial statements. There is no way that Australia can allow this deal to proceed. If it must, the nation, that's Australia, should invade and engineer regime change in Honiara, the capital city of the Solomon Islands. Shortly after, the White House also issued a statement directly to the Solomon Islands. If steps are taken to establish a de facto permanent military presence, power projection capabilities, or a military installation, the United States would then have significant concerns and respond accordingly. Now we can only speculate what respond accordingly specifically means, but it's very clear that Australia, along with its ally, the United States, is clearly saying that a Chinese military base in the Solomon Islands is a red line that must not be crossed. Hmm, where have I heard this term used before in recent geopolitics? Take a look at this article from December 2021, when Russian President Vladimir Putin stated that Moscow has a red line about Ukraine and NATO. This has been well documented over the years, as Putin has always said that NATO expanding further east and into Ukraine would be a red line for Russia's national security. But this is where things get really interesting. The official stance of the American government is that Ukraine is a sovereign nation and that Russia has no authority over Ukraine. America is adamant that Ukraine should have the right to self-determination. Basically, Ukraine should be determining what is in the best interest of Ukraine. And this is why the United States has ignored Vladimir Putin and his security concerns of NATO expansion. However, now look at this Western headline. Scott Morrison says Chinese military base in the Solomon Islands would be a red line for Australia and the United States. However, if we follow the same logic, the Solomon Islands is a sovereign nation. They should also have the right to self-determination. Basically, that ability to determine what is in the best interest of the Solomon Islands. But the reality is that this does not apply to the Solomon Islands because it is Australia and the United States who ultimately will determine what is best for Oceania. It really baffles me that the world can look at these two identical headlines and not see the blatant contradictions. Let's imagine that if Canada or Mexico decided to have a strategic military alliance with China, well, we basically know that the United States would never let this happen. Now, the Solomon Islands Prime Minister has indicated three important points that I think is worth mentioning on this security deal. The first is that the Solomon Islands will supervise Chinese police operating in the country, just like Australian police that had been deployed there before in the past. In addition, the security deal does not include the use of guns 
as there is no gun violence inside the Solomon Islands, and simply firearms are not needed. Finally, there is no future plans for a permanent Chinese military base. Last summer, there was a poll that indicated more than 50% of Australians fear China will militarily attack them at some point in the future. To be honest, I think this poll is quite shocking, as literally China has not done a single thing to indicate they would have any interest in militarily attacking Australia. Don't forget, China is Australia's number one trading partner, and the two nations have enjoyed a very fruitful relationship for many years. Quite frankly, many Australians have gotten very rich from selling iron ore, gas, coal, wool, gold, wine, and seafood to China over the years. But it actually reminds me of a media clip I saw last year that perfectly describes this situation. I'll come straight to the point. This white paper is recommending we spend close to $400 billion over the forward estimates. Now, at some point, the PM is going to be asked a very simple question. In order to protect us from which enemy? Hmm. It's so hard to say. $400 billion, pick one. A regional player. Specifically, Colonel. An Indo-Pacific regional player. More specifically? Indo-Asia-Pacific. That's broader. Who are you leaving out? Europe? Yeah, I sort of need a country. Or an unaligned player. No, a country. One that might threaten us. Just one. Yeah. I wouldn't want to raise tensions. Where? In this room. You know what? I'll name one and you just nod. China. Yeah. Okay. And what exactly are we protecting? Strategic interests. Specifically, Colonel. Indo-Pacific strategic Again, interests. Again, really specifically. Indo-Asia-Pacific yeah. strategic You know what? Interests. I'll say it and then you nod. Our trade routes. Yeah. And who is our number one trading partner? Shall we use an odd system? Sure. China? So under this scenario, we're spending close to $30 billion a year to protect our trade with China from China. And that doesn't strike anyone at this table as odd. But ultimately, the real reason that the Solomon Islands chose China is very simple. China is willing to listen to the real concerns of countries and respond accordingly. In this Guardian article entitled, Is Australia the Partner for the Pacific It Thinks It Is?, author Kate Keon shares, There is one area in which Australia consistently falls down as a partner, climate change, which Pacific leaders have repeatedly said is the gravest security threat it faces. A Pacific climate envoy once described Australia's relationship with climate change as dysfunctional and abusive. Ultimately, if Australia wanted a better relationship with the Solomon Islands, it was up to Prime Minister Scott Morrison to do a better job listening to other countries' legitimate concerns. During the 2019 Pacific Islands Forum, the Prime Minister of Fiji accused Australia's leader of being very insulting and condescending to other leaders as they clashed on the issue of climate change. Another glaring example of how Scott Morrison's government dropped the ball was seen last year when Australia signed the August Defense Alliance with the United States and Britain. Solomon Islands Prime Minister Sogavere stated, The AUKUS Treaty will see nuclear submarines in Pacific waters. I learned of the AUKUS Treaty in the media. One would expect that as a member of the Pacific family, Solomon Islands would have been consulted. Ultimately, Australia's actions speak louder than its words. Over the years, smaller island nations have become frustrated with Australia's stance on climate change, and the Solomon Islands deal with China has shown Australia and the world that smaller countries now have other options. China is building the Belt and Road Initiative and willing to broker deals, fund infrastructure projects, and provide security to those developing nations. I highlighted in a previous video how Western superpowers pulling out of regions and showing a lack of interest in smaller countries is actually providing a valuable opportunity for China to expand its network. In America's own backyard, the Caribbean, many countries are now choosing to partner with China. I made this video about China's digital currency and how it will play a valuable role in the future of international commerce, most specifically in the Caribbean region. Click the link above to watch this full video. Everybody, as we come to the end of today's video, I hope that you can understand some of the mistakes that Australia has made by not listening to the real demands of smaller nations. Australia is a superpower in the Oceania region, and it really was up to them. But at this point, the deal has been signed, and now China is going to have a larger presence in that region. This could potentially be a very good lesson for Australia to learn. And again, let's continue monitoring the situation. 
First of all, I want to thank all of you for taking time to make it to this point in the video. And once again, I encourage you to take advantage of this Skillshare opportunity. This is a fantastic website and I guarantee you, no matter what your interests are in life, you're going to find a suitable Skillshare course that is going to suit your interests. Make sure you're one of the first thousand to click the link below and register for your free one month trial. Everyone, my name is Cyrus Jansen. Thank you again for spending time with me here on YouTube and I look forward to seeing you all in a future video.